Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about tympanometry. Tympanometry is basically the test of middle ear status. Remember the last time we talked about audiometry, when the audiogram shows conductive hearing loss, then that means there is a problem either in the external ear or the middle ear, right? So if we are suspecting a problem in the middle ear, then we can do the tympanometry to confirm our finding. Tympanometry is objective test. What this means is that, remember, in audiometry or audiogram, the patient used to raise their hand whenever he or she perceives the sound waves, right? But here, we do not do anything like that. It's an objective test. It does not depend upon the response of the patient. This is an objective test and it can be done in children. And this is an example of impedance audiometry. What does impedance means? Impedance is a kind of resistance. Whenever the sound waves travels from external ear to the middle ear, then some amount of resistance is provided by this tympanic membrane, right? Tympanic membrane is the membrane that separates external ear from the middle ear. External ear consists of pinna and the external auditory canal, and middle ear is this air filled cavity that consists air ossicles, right? Sound waves. Some of the sound waves get absorbed and then transmitted, whereas some of them get reflected back. So when air pressure is equals on both sides of the tympanic membrane, that means on this side and this side, that is on the external auditory canal and the middle ear cavity, when the air pressure is equal on both sides of the tympanic membrane, this creates least stiff tympanic membrane. At that point of time, the tympanic membrane is least stiff and most compliant. Compliance is the inverse of resistance. That means tympanic membrane captures or absorbs most amount of sound and then transmits it. And when the pressure in the external auditory canal is any greater or lesser than the pressure in the middle ear, at that time, the tympanic membrane becomes stiff. And based on this principle, we use tympanometry to create a tympanogram. In tympanometry, a probe is inserted into the external auditory canal that snugly fits and then we create an airtight seal, right? The probe that we use consists of three chambers, chamber A, B and C. Chamber A is an oscillator that produces a sound of 226 hertz frequency. Some sort of resistance is provided by this tympanic membrane and some of them is absorbed and transmitted while some of them is reflected back. And the reflected sound waves is recorded by chamber C which is a microphone. This records how much of the sound waves is reflected. Chamber B is a pump that produces air pressure, right? The maximum amount of sound waves is reflected when the tympanic membrane is most stiff, that is when it is least compliant. So when chamber C or the microphone records maximum amount of reflected sound, that means the compliance is lowest because when it is most compliant, most of the sound waves pass through it and least amount is reflected, right? And when does the most amount of sound pass through the tympanic membrane? when the pressure in the external ear or the external auditory canal matches with the pressure in the middle ear, right? In a normal ear, pressure in the middle ear is equal to the pressure in the atmosphere, right? Atmospheric pressure or 0 atm. When we apply 0 atm pressure or when we apply no air pressure, at that time the compliance is maximum and most of the sound is passed through or the least amount of sound is reflected back, right? Now, when we apply positive pressure, in the tympanometry, we first apply positive pressure. When we apply positive pressure through chamber B, then this tympanic membrane goes towards medial side, right? Positive pressure. And this creates a very tense, tight tympanic membrane. And most of the sound is reflected back. Most of the sound is reflected back and recorded in this chamber C, the microphone, right? Now, we decrease the pressure from positive towards zero. When, when it comes back to its original position, that's when tympanic membrane is most compliant. It allows most of the sound waves to be transmitted to the middle and inner ear and least amount of sound waves is reflected back and recorded by the microphone. Now, when we further decrease the pressure from zero to negative, it is a bulged tympanic membrane and in this condition, remember I am talking about the pressure that we create in the external ear, right? So when we create a negative pressure, it again becomes stiff and it does not allow the sound waves to be passed through the middle ear and the inner ear and most of them is reflected and again the compliance is low, stiffness or resistance is high, right? We are looking for the air pressure at which the least amount of sound is reflected or the most amount of sound is transmitted through tympanic membrane and then reach the middle and inner ear, right? Let's say the pressure in the middle ear is negative for some reason. What creates negative pressure in the middle ear or a retracted tympanic membrane? Whenever there is occlusion of the stretching tube, right? So if the pressure in the middle ear is negative, then in this condition, when we apply the positive pressure at first, then at that time, 
lot of sound waves are reflected back right when we start decreasing the pressure when it reaches the normal pressure or atmospheric pressure and that time also the compliance is still low most of the sound is still reflected back but when we further decrease the pressure from zero when we raise the negative pressure that's when the least amount of sound is reflected back and most of them is transmitted right and why does this occur because the pressure in the middle ear was negative right so when we create the pressure on the external canal that is equal to the pressure in the middle ear at that time the most of the sound is absorbed and transmitted or in other words the compliance is maximum compliance is the measure of how low how least the sound is reflected back and recorded by the microphone and after using this probe and recording the compliance of the eardrum across different pressure we get a graph which looks something like this let me orient you Look at the x-axis. What you see on the x-axis is the pressure that we created in the external auditory canal by the use of probe and the pressure that is mentioned here, positive pressure and the negative pressure, this is in decapascal, right? And in the y-axis, we have the compliance. The curve that you see, the different shapes of curve, they are in different conditions. Curve A is the normal curve. Normal compliance is 0.3 to 0.6 centimeter cube. The value of the compliance is not mentioned here, but uh, for the purpose of viva, just remember that the normal compliance is 0.3 to 1.6 centimeter cube. Curve A that you see here is the normal curve because at atmospheric pressure the compliance is maximum that means the least amount of sound is reflected back or compliance is the inverse of resistance right so the least amount of resistance is provided by the tympanic membrane and most of the sound is passed through the tympanic membrane or let's say in other words the mobility of tympanic membrane is highest so curve A is the normal curve that's when the pressure in the middle layer is equal to the atmospheric pressure and when we create the pressure in the external auditory canal equal to that atmospheric pressure the compliance or the absorption and transmission of the sound waves is maximum now a sub yours this is a shallow type of curve right sub yours means shallow curve it's still a, a curve that means compliance is maximum at zero decapascal or zero pressure or atmospheric pressure but the peak of compliance is not as much at the normal graph what this means is the pressure in the middle ear has not changed how do you know that because when we create zero pressure in the external auditory canal that's when the compliance is maximum right so the pressure in the middle ear has not changed but for some reasons its ability to transmit absorb and transmit sound has decreased what could give rise to such conditions well this can arise in conditions when there is stiffening of the ear ossicles in conditions like otosclerosis remember middle ear is already a stiffness dominant system so when the ear ossicles becomes further more stiff then although the pressure has not changed the peak of the compliance will decrease but it will still have a maximum compliance or the peak of compliance at that pressure right so as type curve is seen in autosclerosis now we have other variety of a curve that is a d curve d means deep curve right so the maximum compliance or the maximum amount of the sound waves are transmitted at the zero pressure that's correct because the pressure in the middle ear has not changed and when you create zero pressure in the external ear maximum amount of sound is absorbed and transmitted that's normal phenomena but the peak of the compliance it's so high it's too deep what gives rise to such kind of conditions when the compliance or the ability to absorb sound or ability to create mobility of tympanic membrane has increased for some reason in as type of curve the tympanic membrane or ear ossicles were too stiff here they are very less stiff or they are too loose or for some reason we have ossicular discontinuity right there are three ear ossicles if you look at this picture there are three ear ossicles malleus incus and stiffus if for some reason there is ossicular dislocation then this motility of this tympanic membrane increases and that gives rise to a d type of curve deep curve it can also arise in thin tympanic membrane now we have c type curve what c type curve signifies at positive pressure most of the sound is reflected back that is the compliance is lowest compliance is highest when least amount of sound is reflected back and then we start decreasing the pressure normally at zero pressure or at the room pressure the compliance should have been maximum but in c curve we do not see that when we further continue to decrease the pressure we see increase in the compliance or decrease in the amount of sound waves that is being reflected from the tympanic membrane why this occurs this happens because the pressure in the middle ear was negative so we had to create negative pressure in the external ear as well so when the pressure on the both side become equal that's when most of the sound waves were passed so what can create negative pressure in the middle ear 
Remember that stretch in tube helps to maintain the pressure equal on the middle layer that is equal to the external surrounding, right? So if stretch in tube is not functioning properly, we get type C curve. And this and in this type of curve, there is retracted tympanic membrane, right? Now we have another curve that is type B curve. This is a flat curve. What this signifies is no amount of pressure changes is uh, able to transmit the sound waves through the middle and inner ear, right? So this kind of graph is seen in cases when there is fluid in the middle ear. Remember, just think about the conditions when your friend is inside the swimming pool and you shout from the outside. Can you hear whatever you say from outside? No, right? Because the fluid reflects most of the sound. So most of the sound is reflected back, no matter how much you change the pressure. So this is seen in condition when there is fluid in the middle ear, the condition we call otitis media with effusion, secretory otitis media or glue ear, right? So this is the summary of the type of curve that we see. AS is seen in autosclerosis or tympanosclerosis. We talked about that. AD is the deep type of curve that we see in ossicular discontinuity or thin tympanic membrane we talked about that. B type of curve is the worst type of curve when there is fluid in the middle ear, glue ear or we can also see this in the thick tympanic membrane. Another thing that you need to remember is that type C can turn into type B, right? Because at first the middle ear pressure becomes negative and in the later stages there occurs transudation and fluid starts accumulating in the middle ear. Now type B curve. Type B curve was a flat curve but this is a low flat curve, right? Low flat curve. No amount of pressure changes is able to transmit sound through the middle and inner ear. But we have another type of curve that is called high B curve. We have B curve, flat curve, but that is higher, right? Higher in the compliance. We get that kind of curve when there is perforation in the tympanic membrane or we have grommet insertion in the ear. So these are the different types of curves that you can see in tympanometry and likely to see one of them in your UNTOSCI. So thank you.